I absolutely love VMware. It's like one of the greatest things that's ever been invented. A place that you can actually go and build a whole plethora of virtual machines. You don't have to go and build all these different computers anymore for different things. You can now install a hypervisor, VMware's hypervisor ESXi, and then build VMs to do different sorts of things. VMware ESXi version eight, part of the vSphere version eight suite. I'm gonna go through the steps on how to download it, how to actually install it, and then do some basic, basic config around VMware version eight. I'm a tech channel YouTuber. I love tech. I release videos every single week on all things tech, including VMware. So if you don't click on that button and on the bell, you won't get notified and that will not be very good for you. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cross over to my computer. You're gonna need a computer with an internet connection. It's about 600, 700 meg, something like that. It's not huge. You then need to get yourself a USB stick you're gonna be able to plug that into the side of your computer. You're gonna go use some software called Rufus, R-U-F-U-S, free installer off the internet to actually make a bootable USB stick. So download USB, plug it in, install it. Let's go right now. So first things first is we're gonna to need to go and download ESXi. We're here on our computer. You can do this from a Windows computer, from a Mac. You're gonna go into your Google machine. You're gonna type in VMware ESXi 8 free and then you're gonna be presented with this screen right here. And then you select download VMware hypervisor for free. Now, if you don't have a VMware account, you're gonna need a VMware account to actually continue. So go and create yourself an account. From scratch, you're gonna enter in some information and then we then log in and then we proceed to the next steps. Once logged in, you'll be presented with a license key. This will be the free license key of ESXi that you can then apply to your ESXi host to make it fully usable forever. And you'll notice down the bottom that you've got a couple of options to download. We're gonna go and download the very top one, which is VMware vSphere Hypervisor ESXi ISO image, making sure that it's version 8.0. That's 619 meg as of this video. We're gonna select download. And then once the download is actually completed, you will then need to go and get that ISO and put it onto a bootable drive, bootable DVD, CD, or better, a USB stick. So make that USB stick bootable. If you're on Windows computer, use an application called Rufus. It is free, you can download it, you can create a bootable ISO of that ESXi. We won't be covering it in this video, but that's what you should be doing next. You then will be running that USB stick into the side of your computer. Power on, you press a specific key on the keyboard to boot into that USB stick. You should now be presented with a loading screen here for ESXi version 8. It's going to go through some initial loading of some files in preparation for the install and the setup. So welcome to ESXi 8. If you accept those terms and conditions, you can press F11. It's gonna now scan your available devices. It will now ask you what hard drive you want to install the ESXi 8 onto. So if your computer or server has more than one drive, you select the one that is appropriate to you. If you're happy with that, press enter because that will erase all the content on that drive. You now wanna go and set a root password. Your root password is essentially your full administrator password to be able to log in and manage your ESXi host. You'll get one final warning that your disk will be partitioned. And if you're happy with that, go ahead. The installation process will now commence. You then need to start configuring it. You need to do some initial configuration, including assigning an IP address to that ESXi host. So your computer or your server should be connected to a network connection at this point. And if you have a DHCP server, essentially a DHCP server is gonna give you an IP address. But either way, if you do or you don't, I recommend that you go and set a static IP address. You'll notice that in my case, I do not have a DHCP server, which means it has not picked up an IP address automatically. So we're gonna go and assign one ourselves manually. We're gonna press F2 and we're gonna go and customize our ESXi host. Asking you for your root password to log in. You're then presented with the space where we can go and configure and customize our ESXi host. You can reset the password if you so need to. It's a nice feature to have. Let's go into configure management network. Within here, you've got a few different options. You've got network adapters. You can see exactly how many network adapters your computer or server has. Your VLAN, if you wanna set a VLAN on your specific NICs, this is really helpful. And the other thing I will note is that all of this you can change later on once you've logged in via a browser. You don't have to do this right now. The section we're gonna now assign an IP address is the IPv4 
area. We're going to go into there and we're actually going to go and set ourselves a static IP. You'll see that the dynamic is marked. So we're going to go and set a static IP and then give a new IP address and subnet and default gateway IP address into there so that you know how to access your ESXi host from your web browser. Completely optional to you, but IP version 6, if you're not going to use it, why don't you turn it off? If you don't need it, why have it switched on? DNS configuration, do you want to set some DNS IPs into here? If you have a DNS server, it's good to actually put these IP addresses into there. Once that is done, it may or may not ask you to reset your network configuration or your ESXi host. Now I've got a static IP that you can see right there, 105. We are going to change that shortly to 104, but we can now go into there. We're going to go back into F2, log in with our credentials and see what other settings we can actually change. If you want to restart your management network, you can do that right from there. You can also test your network, which is really nice. So you can go into here and actually just ping some devices, perhaps some devices on your network or out on the internet. If your host is out on the internet, generally don't recommend it but you can do that right from there. You can also restore some things if you so choose to. Configure some keyboard, you can actually do some troubleshooting, you can actually turn on ESXi shell and our SSH directly from within here. You can also do this from the web browser, from the GUI, once you are logged in through a computer. But the nice feature right here is available to you, you can also see some system logs and some support information, and then you can do a full reset of that config. From that perspective, the ESXi host is now ready to go. The next step is now to go and get yourself another computer, another device, and now navigate to the IP address of 172.16.1, in my case, 105 or 104. You put in, of course, your IP address that you have set. So with our host now ready to go, the next step is now to open up a web browser on another computer. Now the great thing is you can do this from a Windows computer, from a Mac, you can do it from a smart device, as long as the device the ESXi host and the device that you're gonna be using is on the same network, you'll be able to access that ESXi host. So we're gonna go and open up our Safari browser and we're gonna go and navigate to the IP address of that host, which in our case is 172.16.1.104. We actually made it 104. You may get a warning such as this, a private message. I'm doing this on a Mac, but yours may look some slightly different if you're doing this on a Google Chrome or Firefox on a Windows computer, but you're just gonna accept that and you're gonna go visit the website. If you do want that to go away, you need to look into uh, getting a certificate for your ESXi host. Otherwise you can just ignore it, especially if it's within an internal network, you may not have requirements to do that. But if you do, look into that, but that will be a separate task altogether. And here we are presented with the ESXi host client. If you're familiar with previous versions of VMware, such as version six, version seven, version eight does look slightly different. They've had a bit of a facelift and actually looks quite cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna log in with our root credentials. If you remember, we set that root password, very, very long password, and that's what we're gonna put into here. And then we're gonna go and log in. For the first time you'll log in, you will be asked if you want to improve the VMware host client. You can actually join this customer experience improvement program. If you do want to do that, you can click on that. We're just going to untick it and say, okay. And here we are presented with our ESXi host all up and running. And it looks absolutely brilliant. Signing a license to a host is quite easy. You're going to go into the manage tab on the very far left under navigator and then licensing. You'll see that there is currently no license there. We're gonna say assign license, and this is where you paste in that key, and then you can fully use ESXi for free. Done, finished. Why don't you let me know how you went down below in the comments, did it work or not? Remember to subscribe, click on the button on the bell, really appreciate it. Stay tuned for the next video where we talk about all things tech. We will see you next time.